Do you remember how you reacted when Ali said he wanted to study psychology? Gee, to be honest with you? Yes. I said, oh no. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Ali Matu here, clinical psychologist, and welcome back to The Psych Show, where we make psychology fun and easy to understand and celebrate mental health. It's Father's Day today, and I wanted to make a video with my dad, who was actually supposed to be here right now, but can't travel because of the coronavirus. Let me see if I can get him. That's probably gonna be the biggest challenge. Let me see if I can get him onto Zoom. Abuji, welcome to The Psych Show. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I wanna jump into all these questions that came up from this community. When Ali was a kid, did you have any hopes or dreams for his future career? When I reached USA, the only one desire I had was that to provide the best education possible. You didn't have any dreams that I want him to become a doctor, I want him to become yeah. a lawyer, I want him to become an engineer. Deep down, which I, I don't think I ever uh, discussed that with you, I don't think was so. That, uh, <laughs> that you should become an MD doctor. Do you remember what you told me MD stands for? Yeah. What was that? I've forgotten. It, you told me that um, MD stands for money doctor. Money doctor. Yeah. Do you remember what you told me PhD stands yeah. for? Poor hungry doctors. <laughs> Poor hungry doctors, yes. When I was growing up, this was another question. Um, did you have any idea of what I was good at? You always um, communicated well at all levels. Even with the kids, I see you playing with the babies and kids and all that, and then grown up and then old people. Your communication was great from the from the beginning. I, I, I would argue with you on the from the beginning. I, I was very socially anxious and didn't feel comfortable meeting new people. Um, there's many times I remember crying when I was uncomfortable. One time you took me to a new Sunday school and I felt uncomfortable. I didn't know anyone there. I remember crying. It, it wasn't until high school that I started doing speech and debate that I, I started to feel more comfortable. But uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, speech and debate was uh, the breaking point where you just uh, went ahead in, in your uh, careers type thing. But what I'm saying is that when people used to come to our home and had a baby, you used to play with the babies. Mm. Uh, you never said, no, go away or this thing, or I don't want to touch. You used to love them. And then uh, I see that you've been uh, very nice to parents all the time, especially, especially mama. From mama, I, I always got, um a sense of empathy of trying to understand and and um, have compassion for other people i think what you taught me a lot was um how to interact with people how to how to be kind to everyone to be um generous with your time to be patient those are the two social skills i i think i got from everyone and then from from Bai, from my brother, I got a lot of um, how to navigate new technologies, how to think through new things. I, I, and I credit all of that for making this YouTube channel popular, not po not popular, True. possible. But I credit. I would, I would not uh, say in a way that I've been teaching you particularly this, 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 but I actually encouraged you uh, and kind of uh, when I taught you the the swimming, I just put you in the pool. You were teaching me how to drive, and we started in the parking lot of your company. I was going around, and then you said, okay, okay, Beta, you're doing good. You took me onto the, the str nearby streets, pretty empty. Okay, you're doing good. Then took me down um, El Camino or Saratoga Avenue. This is like a, a regular street. There's traffic going, okay, doing pretty good. Okay, now Beta, just make a left-hand turn here. And I started to turn left, and I realized we're going on the highway. And inside, I was freaking out. But what what I um what I always remember is you um you would have you would encourage me even if I don't know if you were scared inside but you you didn't show that you were scared and by doing so you gave me a lot of trust 
you communicated a lot of trust that, hey, you can do it, you can figure this out, I trust you. That's, that's what I'm saying is, I'll, I always put you in a situation and uh, was very calm about it myself. Although I was scared, of course I was always scared, but uh, I showed you that I have a confidence in you, you can handle it, you can do it. Something that my, my advisor in grad school told me is she said, Ali, you're really good at taking criticism and taking negative feedback. And I said, that's something my dad taught me, is uh, when you and I were visiting New York City and we were at Statue, we were visiting the Statue of Liberty and we were lost or we needed information, you told me to go, go ask that person. And I said, no, I don't want to ask. I was getting shy. And, and you told me about how um, anyone who gives you information, anyone, input, 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 anyone who gives you yeah, information. I was going to tell you that <laughs> this was the main thing that get input. In, and we watched that movie, I think. Uh, yeah, Short Circuit. That was a movie we watched all the time. Yeah, yeah, we watched this movie all the time. And um, yeah, I got some bad news to tell you about that movie. Um, what happened? You, the guy who plays the Indian character, um, right. Johnny Five is Alive. He's not Indian. He's a white guy who is wearing brown huh. face makeup. Um, I just he did very well as an Indian. Well, he did very well as a stereotype of an Indian. Right. Yeah, the standards right. standards have come up a long way since then. But um, yeah. you know, that was some that was a lesson that I learned uh, uh, that has always stuck with me is this idea that anyone who teaches you anything that's a blessing that is something yeah. that that um knowledge uh, from whatever source that helps you to grow and improve and learn um that is something we should seek out and um that is something that very much helped me in grad school because i got a lot of tough feedback i got a lot of criticism um those were tough tough years where they really kind of break you down and rebuild you. You showed, you, know, you modeled, you showed me how to do those things. Right, I, I think if you take one strong point from me is uh, this, uh, let's call it uh, input uh, business. <laughs> I, we were together in London all alone. We were in um, uh, Niagara Fall together. We were in New York, we were, on the uh, subway with the suitcases and all, and we were on the airport. Everywhere, I did not take the lead. I just kept an eye on you. And uh, when we went to Washington, D.C., monuments and all that, uh, I let you be the master of that area. Go do it. Let's bring me this information. What can I do? So kind of I was... If we call it teaching, the teaching was the self-confidence. Do you remember how you reacted when Ali said he wanted to study psychology? Gee, to be honest with you? Yes. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I was, I mean, I had no idea about psychology. The only picture I got was a guy or gal is uh, lying down on the sofa and the other doctor is sitting. Actually, I was unaware of this psychology business myself. So I was not really sure that uh, that is the path, but I supported you because you wanted to be on that path. Uh, you basically liked it, and I didn't show too much disliking or disapproving. But now I come to think of it that, uh, see, if somebody has a fever, you can check the fever, you can tell that he is sick or he's coughing or he's this and that. But with the mental health, it was totally, totally um, untraceable, undetectable. Basically, I had no idea what the psychologist does. I never wanted you to be that. Uh, I wanted you to be MD and all that. And uh, But we didn't discuss it in an aggressive way because again my thought plan was my job is done you are in the usa you have good colleges you have good uh, universities you do it whatever you want to and you know from small jobs amc counter yeah my first job working at the movie theater one of my favorite jobs 
See, if you remember that I never, ever, ever discourage you no. from any job. No, no, no. That's so, true. So that was, uh, that was, I think, uh, the key that when you went to this, uh, wanted to do the psychology major, I said, okay, you want to do it, you do it. I never got a sense that you, there was no point in time where I felt like you said, don't do this. I did feel like you were subtly communicating, is this the right thing? And I, I remember one time, I don't know who said it, if it was Mama or you, um, but someone talked about Mare Nafsiyad, which, yeah. what's the translation to that? Psychologist. Psycho and the view of um, psychologists or therapists in uh, Pakistani um, culture or in Bollywood films is not very positive. Um, no. The view is often if you are working, quote unquote, with crazy people, then you are crazy yourself, that there's something wrong with you. So yeah. I started to get some of these feelings, these impressions, and I, was, I remember being very defensive. Um, I don't know if I communicated that to you, but that was what was going on in my head. And it was very important to me that you understand this is a real science, it's a real field. And I don't think I communicated this part to you, but one of the reasons why that was so important to me is I was also getting that from friends. I was also getting that from other people, that there was a, there's a bias against mental health. It's gotten better since 2002, but it's still there. There's a stigma. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot that's unknown. Still to this day, I get some YouTube comments saying psychology is not a real science. This is a junk channel. Oh, so, true. They, see, uh, you always defended the idea of uh, being a psychologist. Um, and we got a little bit into discussion. But basically, I told told you earlier that I never thought you will be able to make comfortable living. And I used to talk to myself, hey, guy, I put you in the USA. This is the best opportunity for you to be something, whatever you want to be. See, now even days to, to your daughter, I make comments that, oh, she's going to be astronaut, or she's going to be this, she's going to be scientist. So those are things what in my back of my mind and still are in my mind. I, I think um, the going to the NASA and the going to the moon probably is the best thing, exciting thing for me. It's something that we can watch, we can see, we can touch, we can feel. It would but terrify me to something. have her go up at a rocket, but okay. Right. <laughs> but psychology itself, you know, is the getting into somebody's mind and treating them was a novel idea for me. And I didn't go with that idea mentally. But again, I never discouraged you. No, you never said stop. You never yeah. said if you if you yeah. go to study this, I'm not going to pay for your education. And I know right. I'm very fortunate with that because some people who are watching this video they're in a very different place where their family might be saying, we are not going to support you if you study this thing. So um, I, I feel very fortunate in that. It sounds like for you, part of it was you didn't have much information about psychology. The information you had was based on these movies, not probably the best impression. And also um, the idea of mental health wasn't really something that um, you had too much knowledge of. I, I was unaware of Salman's uh, sickness. Very late, I reconciled with that after a long time. It took me a long time to settle with that. Yes, that is the problem. Uh, and I used to say, hey, guy, get up and do things. What's the matter with you? And um, he will uh, say, OK, I'll do it. But he will not do it because of this sickness. Yeah. And I didn't grasp that in the early on. So you're, uh, you're talking about my um, my brother's bipolar depression 
and right, right. understanding of that change. I mean, none of us saw it. Basically, I would say it was because I was not uh, um, into this uh, psychology business at all. I never thought it's a, it's a really beneficial to human beings. Mm. I always say that, hey, operation, when doctor does the operation, the guy is better. You yeah. can see it has changed his life or whatever. But uh, psychology is a mind thing, it's a habit thing, it's uh, being down and you want to pick it, pick that guy up. So that's a whole lot. And I was, I never reconciled with that before. What changed? Or has it changed? Is that still what you believe about psychology? What changed was your brother's sickness. When I reconciled with that, that really impacted me. Yes, it's a problem. Yes, it's a mental problem. And now, uh, sorry to disturb you. Now, I'm so much into this that I read people, I analyze them, and I recommend them immediately go see the doctor, go see a psychologist, go see this one. I think you are successful. I always uh, give you example of that. I forgot the name. That guy who is who has no hair. Fraser Crane. Um, Fra but he used to talk a lot. Doctor Phil. Doctor Phil. Doctor Phil. <laughs> I used to watch him. I used to watch him a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I said, Hey, my son is becoming that guy. So, <laughs> so that has some impact on me. I. I'm proud of you, but um, I think we should make more money. <laughs> well, I'm not going to disagree with you. <laughs> See, I never ask you how much you make and uh, what do you do with the money. But since I've been in, in the financial side of my life also, been an accountant or a financer all the, my life, I wanted to see those numbers. Right. Uh, that, hey, guy, my this guy is successful. Alhamdulillah, he's fine. Now I can um, go on my way. Well, you've so, always been you've always been a numbers guy. You tried to get me looking at budgets, and I just never thought about that. And I was not a business person. Um, Nguyen is much more the numbers, Excel I'm glad. I'm glad for that. Yeah, really. yeah. You know, and, and, you know, my answer to that, if people are wondering, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm not rich, but I'm no, also not I, I'm struggling. Fine. I'm fine. Don't tell me anything. <laughs> Let's leave it like that. When I was in Silicon Valley uh, starting up, I had to... Uh, I was uh, laid off. I was fired. I was... So that life was starting up the first right. immigrant people. So it was very tough. And deep down, I wanted you to be in a profession where you make good money, if not a lot of money. Yeah. I don't want to. I'm not a greedy about the money, but I want to have some comfortable level where yeah. you can uh, support your kids or, or take your kids wherever they want to go yeah. or whatever they want to do or be successful people. You don't want me to be stressed about finances. Yeah. Yeah. How has Ali being a psychologist benefited your family? Two things. Number one, helped me a lot with the Salman, reconciling it, and uh, his uh, demise also helped me a lot. Uh, I was scattered because he was. Uh, um, don't take it wrong. He was our firstborn, and he was Mama's. Uh, uh, mama's prince and all that uh, and it was shocking for us and your thing uh, your career your talks really helped us a lot number two was that see then i told you earlier that now i recommend people go see a psychologist or psychiatrist or somebody i never did that this is because of your input your influence, your education, or um, your success stories um, helping me to understand that, yes, this is a great profession is in. 
you know, if, if for anyone who's watching who doesn't know, my um, my brother died by suicide. I've shared my story of that, of, of what that experience has been like. I won't share his story because that was his short story to share. Um, but Abuji, that has that kind of experience has happened so many times where someone I am close to, friend or other family members, sometimes on New Ann's family, sometimes our extended family, reach out to me because they know I'm in mental health and someone they know is struggling. And I think this is true for anyone who's watching this. There's so We all struggle with mental health. 50% of Americans at some point in their life are going to struggle with mental health. We all know someone who experiences these things, but when you have someone who's in mental health in the family, you hear about it more. But a lot of these stories right. aren't shared because we don't feel comfortable sharing it. But I have had the experience where I have found so many people who have struggled with this and, and will talk to me because they're close to me. I, I several times, and even now I recommended Ali, talk to this person. Ali, take care of this or hey, find out, help out. And you answer me that uh, I am a relative. I cannot be a fair uh, psychologist or something. So you didn't encourage me to recommend you people. But what I took is that I recommend now a lot of people, a lot of doctors around here. Yeah. And uh, actually, I keep track of the doctors where are they are, how good they are, and then I recommend them. Because <laughs> even some cases, believe me, I pay them the transportation charges. I say, go see that guy. And I pay the fee sometimes. Mentally health is very important to me now. And, and Abuji, I love that. That's what I do. That's what I, when someone comes to me for help, my job is to give them enough knowledge and connect them to resources to get that help. I can't be the help for the friend or family member, but I can connect them. So that's what I try yeah. to do too. But I really feel bad. And that thing never gets out of my mind. The, the suicide of my son. Um, I loved him a lot. You know, um, something that uh, after after Salman died, um, one of the benefits I had was I, I knew a lot of people who are suicide experts. And I remember talking to um, a good friend, his name's Stephen, and I, I told him about the guilt I felt, that um, why didn't I see the sign sooner, why didn't I do something earlier. And one of the things he told me is, he said, we all do the best we can um, with the information we have and the abilities we have at that time. And that has always stuck with me. And the other thing that I'll share that uh, another friend of mine who's a suicide expert, Melinda, told me, she said, you have no idea how many times you did save him because suicidality is a chronic condition for a lot of people. It's not just, uh, it, it's more rare that someone who has bipolar depression only struggled with it at one point in their time, in their life. It's pr more likely they struggled with it at many different points in their life. And so you have no yeah. idea how many times you did save him, how many times you did help him. And I think that's probably true in our I'm, case I'm, as well. I'm, I'm glad. The only regret is that uh, I wish you, you should have been psychologist a lot earlier. <laughs> So that we could have saved uh, Salman. Well, this I is... could have been that intelligent to pick it up that he has a problem, and uh, I did not pick up. It's that it really, was a, really haunts me. You know, Abuji, it's a, it was a different world. Um, mental health was not really a part of schools. Um, in some sense, it still isn't. In some places, it is. Um, it was not picked up in his schools. It wasn't picked up elsewhere. And um, the world is different now. And this is what we have to do now, is uh, find ways to help other people as much as we can. I'm glad um, whatever you are doing, you are doing a great job. A well, great speaking of that, um, people really want to know, I got this question a lot. What do you think of his YouTube channel, his TV appearances? Um, what do you think of all of that stuff? And I more? start following you uh, just because you are my son, not because you are a <laughs> successful psychologist or something. <laughs> But just because, son, I wanted to see you. 
Yeah. I I I watch all your videos. Basically, ninety percent of the time, I watch you. Um, you can say you are my son. Just wanted to see my son. <laughs> That's the reason that. Uh, uh, it's very interesting. Um, and what about what was it like for you to uh, to have those uh, to see my different uh, TV appearances on on the news or on Netflix, this kind of stuff? Oh, I love that. Uh, I thought um, I, I see you one day. You may become a doctor, Phil. Or <laughs> <laughs> if it is a good or not, I don't know. What's your advice to? parents who might not support their child's decision to pursue psychology or pursue mental health? We do not know that our kid is going to be successful or not. Or, uh, but at least what we can do is support him to be, be, try to become a successful or maybe save somebody's life or uh, let him do whatever he wants to be in life. You may not be making millions, but at least you are bringing the bread home, and that is a um, that's pretty success for me. What's your advice to those kids who might feel like their parents don't understand or don't support the field that they're going into? I would say that um, discuss your um, aspirations a lot with the uh, peer groups. Oh the students or the teacher discuss it and uh, as you and i went for input that is very very important if you want to know something psychology or md or or whatever field you want to um, they got to get the inputs and then figure out what's good for them what appeals them so get as much knowledge and information you can about the field, about jobs, about the education required. Right. Learn. Even if you have talked to one person, don't stop there. Yeah. Get another opinion. Get another opinion. Get another opinion. And then make up your mind. Yeah. And if that's what you like, you go for it. You know, this is something that I tell people on this channel is... If you want to major in psychology, wonderful. Um, actually, I got a video. Check out that video if, uh, about the decision to major in psychology or not. But most people who major in psychology do not go and get a master's or a PhD or, or a PsyD, a doctorate. Most people stop at the undergraduate level. And you need to be very realistic about um, how to best prepare yourself for job opportunities in the field. So you have to ask a lot of questions. I very much agree about that. Right. Uh, anything else you want to say while you have uh, the attention of the site yeah. show? Right, uh, definitely. Send me your address and I'll send you a bill for all this stuff. <laughs> please, please pay, pay it right away. Well, Abuji, thank you, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here on the Psych Show. Well, um, thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about what it's like to be married to a psychologist, check out this video right over here. If you um, enjoyed this video or got any value out of it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who might benefit from it, and. Happy Father's Day. Thanks for being oh, a part yeah. of this community. <laughs> oh, this is the best gift I think uh, you gave me. And uh, the same thing to your students and listeners and watchers and all that. It's the best happy Father's Day to you. Oh, well, thank you, Abhiji. I love you. you. Thank you. Love you guys.